Okay, welcome back. This is ENG 460, and we're still proceeding along in terms of our VHDL implementation of a MIPS processor. And here we have the slide, and today we're going to do the register file. Okay, register file has a uh, read register 1 input, 5 bits, read register 2 input, 5 bits. It selects one of the 32 bit registers, puts the data out here. Read reg 1 puts the data on read data 1, read reg 2 puts on read data 2. We can also write one of the 32 registers, and that can either come from the target or the destination bits in the instruction. And then the data we write is coming in on this line right here. Okay. And then our controller will pulse this when it wants to write data on the data line specified by the write register into the reg file. Okay, let's go ahead and get started and do this guy. Now, if we go back and look at our code, this is our current project. We have an ALU. We have a MUX, we have a sign extender. The sign extender has a test bench. The MUX has a test bench. The ALU has a test bench. Mm -hmm. And then we created the actual project, or the actual file MIPS, that was the processor. And we put a MUX and a sign extender in there, and then we created a test bench for our MIPS. Well, what we want to do today is um, create the register file. So let's create a new VHDL module, and let's call this guy. Let's see, what should we call this guy? How about. Uh, um, oh, I don't know, register file. How about that? Register file, and then next. And I'll just uh, type all the code in. So let's see. We delete all this stuff. Comments. I don't think we're going to need, yeah, we might need that actually. So let's keep that around. Uh, we'll uncomment it when we need it. But here's our code for our register file. Now I've already gotten this written up, so I'm going to just copy and paste it. So. Let me copy and paste that in there, and I'll put our port statement in the entity block. Okay. Now, when you look at the port statement, what do you have? Well, you have read reg 1, which is an input, standard logic vector, and it's w down to 0. Okay, so now I need a generic because I've got some, um, uh, I can make this guy an arbitrary size. So we'll put a generic into there, okay. and there's my generic, and there's my port statement. B defined defaults to 32, which is the size of the registers, 32-bit registers, okay, 32-bit registers, and then W is um, the number of bits to address those. So that's like the number of bits of source, target, and destination. Five bits allows me to identify one of 32 registers. So read reg one and read reg two and write reg are all five bits, four down to zero. Source, target, destination, and then write data, of course, is 32 bits. That's what we want to write in there. And then reg write is a one bit value from our controller. And then read data one, read data two is the actual contents of the register, a 32 bit value that's specified by read reg one and two. Okay? All right, so that's pretty much the entity. That's what goes in, what goes out. Now, let's come down here and do the architecture. Get some returns here so I can get my architecture up here. And let's see. Well, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a data type. And I'm going to create a data type that's essentially going to be a 2D array. So what I'm doing here is I am creating a data type called reg file type. And it's an array of 0 to 2 to the w minus 1, which is 2 to the 5th minus uh, 32, 31. So it's going to go from 0 to 31. So it's going to go from register 0 to 31. And that kind of syncs up with uh, MIPS, right? MIPS has 32 registers going from 0 to 31. But each one of those registers is going to be a standard logic vector of b minus 1 down to 0. Well, b was 32, so 31 down to 0. Most significant bit, b31, least significant bit, 0. So I've got a 2D array. I've got 32, 32, 32-bit 32 registers. Kay. Now what I have to do is create an instantiation of that guy. Kay. Well, let's do that. Kay. So if I copy and paste this guy. I am going to click it right here, and I am going to paste it, and let's kind of bring it back here. Now here, what I did is I used a signal. I said I am going to create something called array reg, and array reg is going to be of type reg file type, and I'm going to set the default value equal to this. I wonder if I can bring, well actually you guys can see this. Yeah, you can still see this. So there is um, a reg file, and I'm giving it um, a default value, and it's 32. 32-bit registers. Okay, so there it is right there. Okay. Well, let's see what's going on. We got an error in right here. 25. Let's look, think about 25. Okay. So at that point, standard logic vector, signal array file type. 
Yeah, the errors right here, this begin. The declarations go in between the begin end block. So yeah, I kind of copied and pasted them a little too soon there. So let me put that begin down there and save it. And let's go look at this guy. So what I'm doing is I've got 32 32-bit registers. Uh, I create an instance of that and then I initialize it. So my zero register, I'm giving it the contents of all zero. Okay, then register one is the AT register. I'm just going to put one in there so it to know I know that's register one. Register two is V0. Register three is V1, A0, A1, A2, A3. You kind of see what's going on here. T0 is register 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then I've got register S0, 1, 2, 3. These are all the MIPS registers over here. And then here's your global pointer. I'm putting that to 1,000, 8,000. And then there's the stack pointer. I'm going to put that at 7FFF F1EC. And then there's my frame pointer. And there's my return address. So I'm kind of giving all the register initial values. All right. So now I basically have created um, 32 registers, where each register is 32 bits. And I've actually initialized them with values. Right. So that's in the declaration part of the architecture. Now we have to go down to the begin, because we have to be able to read and write this guy. So how do you read and write this guy? Well, it's not exactly all that hard. Let's just copy and paste that code into there, and we'll talk about it. Right. So I'm going to paste it into my begin in block. And what I've got here is, well, I have a process. Right. That process is only going to get triggered if reg write is called. Well, what was reg write? Reg write was a one-bit input, and it came from the controller. Right. So let's go back and look at our controller. There's reg write. It's a one-bit input that's going to tell me to take the right data and put it into the right register. Right? So down here at the bottom, uh, if reg write ever changes, then I uh, execute this process. Okay, so I come into my begin block and I say if reg write is equal to one, then I'm telling it to write. And what I do is I take the five bits on register on, on, on this guy on the destination register on the input of this write register, which is typically your destination register. I convert it to an unsigned and then I convert it to an integer and I use that as an index into array reg. So that's going to pick out one of these 32 registers up above. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to shove write data into that particular register. This is the register I want. This is the right data that goes into there. I just assign it to that two-dimensional data structure and use the index to pick out which register. Now, that only happens when reg write gets asserted. Now, down here, I've got write read data, read data one and two. Well, I don't really care. That, that gets read no matter what. I don't need to pulse it. So what I basically do there is I read what's on read register one, which is typically your source bits from an R-type, and this is your target bits from an R-type. And then I have to convert it to an unsigned and then to an integer to actually use it as an index into that array. And that will read 32 bits and put it into read data. And that's all there is to it. This is your implementation of the reg file. This is the creation of the reg file right here, the data type. And then this is the actual me initializing the contents of a register. So at that point, let's select reg file. Let's check the behavioral syntax to see if I made any mistakes. Now it looks like I got a looks like I got a few. Okay, so let's go to line 64 and see what happens. Well, it doesn't like this thing here, but you notice I'm taking write reg, which is a five-bit standard logic input. Um, and I am converting it to an unsigned. Remember when I started the video, I said I was going to possibly need this guy here, IEEE numeric standard. And yeah, anytime you use signed data type, you got to put that in there. So let's save it. Let's select reg file again, behavioral check syntax. And it works. Sweet. It worked. Great. All right, I'm going to stop the video here. And in the next video, we'll do a test bench for this guy. All right, see you next time.